Talk five. A boy from Indonesia once said to his father, Hey dad, I want to go to school. But his father replied, No, we don't have any money. You must work instead of going to school. As a result, Park Sai remained illiterate all his life. Forty years have passed, and his son said the same thing to Park Sai. Hey dad, I want to go to school. But sadly, Park Sai's answer was also just the same thing. No, we don't have any money. You must work instead of going to school. This is a story which I read on the website of a certain NGO. And I felt so sorry for Parkside when I read his story and looked at his picture. I was really shocked and I wondered what could be done to save people like him. So today, I'm standing here to talk about the cycle resulting from the lack of education and poverty in developing countries. In developing countries, hundreds of millions are denied an education. The United Nations says that there are more than 700 million people in the world who cannot attend school. And the main reason for this dreadful situation is poverty. As a result, they have great difficulties throughout their lives. For example, the they dream of working in a company, they lack the basic academic skills, which are the so-called three R's reading, writing, and arithmetic. Constantly, they are condemned to a life of physical labor and the low wages that go with it. So they have to spend their entire lives marred in poverty. And this situation repeats itself over and over again. If parents are poorly educated, their children end up in the same situation. Many people in developing countries are simply part of the chain of illiteracy. Now, some of you may wonder what this problem has to do with us. And the answer is nothing, if we choose to ignore it. But should our consciences allow us to ignore it? Please, imagine yourself stuck in that chain of illiteracy. How would you feel? Hopeless and helpless, I'm sure. The solution, of course, is education. Education is an indispensable source of power, enabling us to broaden our path through life. And in all fairness, everybody should receive it. But, you know, as I've said, many people in developing countries are unable to receive a decent education and therefore cannot escape from the terrible situation. Ladies and gentlemen, I believe that we who live in developed countries are the only ones who can cut this chain of illiteracy. And actually, governments in developing countries are too inexperienced, too understaffed, or simply too poor to do it. The lives of people living in developing countries are from proceeding against their wishes because they couldn't receive enough education. So what can be done to help with this? The best way, of course, is direct action. Go to developing countries and help with NGO projects such as teaching children on the spot. But I guess you are too busy to do that, and that is simply not a practical solution. So, an excellent substitute is to help out from here, in your home country, by participating in projects run directly from Japan. For example, there is a project named World Herakoya Movement, which is handled by UNESCO. And you can start from a donation of, yes, just 1,000 yen per month. That will certainly not break the bank. You still have plenty of money left, right? According to the Nikkei newspaper, in developing countries, it costs about 500 yen per month to let one child go to school. So please, think about it. With your 1,000 yen, Two children can go to school for a month. In other words, you can help break the chain of illiteracy just with some of your pocket money. 
Your donation money would be used for many purposes, such as buying stationery, supporting the families, training the teachers, and so on. And actually, I am already a supporter of this project. After donating, I received a report from the UNESCO about the project, and I was really happy to read it because it made me realize that some innocent lives were saved from a terrible destiny through my small donation. It would be wonderful if there were someone here in this very audience who was willing to join me. Around the world, there are a number of supporting projects, including this, uh, this World Terakoya Movement, and thanks to them, many people have come to lead happy and satisfying lives. Salamati from Nepal couldn't go to school in her childhood, but thanks to donations, she eventually became literate. And now she's part of a project supporting children in Nepal to get an education. Of course I know that we still have a long, long way to go to cut all the chains of literacy, but if you and others join this kind of project, you can turn Park Sides into Kalamakis. We can certainly go one step forward. Now, many people in developing countries are bound by the chain of illiteracy and suffer from poverty. But with your help, such people would be able to acquire the knowledge and the skills they need to broaden their lives. So ladies and gentlemen, let's give illiterate people the power that comes with education, the power that breaks the chain of illiteracy, the power that will finally let them lead full and satisfying lives of their own choosing. Thanks for listening.